Now, lately, I've been thinking a lot about how we're in the pain management business. We're also in the energy management business. We really have to manage our own energy. It would take energy away from us and what gives us energy. But I think that's another presentation in and of itself. And one thing I was thinking about tonight is I'm putting together all these slides and I've been working on them on and off all day. And I woke up and wrote mostly three pages just on this is that I was a little bummed out because there's so much I want to say. And, and I realized, OK, Dave, this is this is not going to be a one and done. This is something that I'm going to have to revisit probably quite a bit and possibly often. So as I just said, we're kind of in the in the pain management business, if you think about it. There's there's going to be pain. There will be blood. And in fact, I've done complete presentations where I talk about the percentage of time that you're actually in a drawdown. And believe it or not, it's the majority of the time you're given back open profits or sometimes you're outright losing in your trades. So you have to learn to accept the normal amount of pain. As I was getting ready to go live, I was thinking a lot about like what Mark Douglas says, if you if you put on a trade and there's a lot of stress, you haven't fully accepted the risk of that trade. So there's a lot of tangents we can go off on when it comes to pain management, but there will be pain. And as I often say, there will be blood. And also, and this is one more thing, and again, another tangent, all trades will eventually end badly. And we've got one that we've been in for, I think about a year and a half now, and it's getting pretty close to that stop. But it's been a fun ride and it's been a good ride and we did give up a lot of money in the end and maybe i'll show that example next week and hopefully i know words you should never say but hopefully it'll survive the stop and keep on going now for core trend trades in other words if you're trading my methodology and especially if you're following along with the service you occasionally have to accept the pain of open losses like we're seeing now it's like um you know, I look at my screens and I see the equity is getting whacked. I'm like, what's well, getting whacked? And I see ASO getting hit pretty hard. I'm like, oh, geez, as they, as uh, they say in Fargo, right? No, I say more than that. But you have to accept the pain of those open losses with the hopes. And I know, again, I said hope. I'll say I hope a lot tonight, believe me. That the correction is just a normal and healthy one. It's going to knock some people out, knock out some nervous Nellies. Maybe knock out some Johnny come lately. So we'll do a little walkthrough on, on possible people behind the trade in a second. And there's some new players that may come in the market, and those old players that were knocked out might come back in. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff happens in a correction. Now, sometimes a correction turns into something more than just that. And obviously, you kind of hate yourself a little bit when you ride a correction way down and finally get stopped out. Then you think, geez. Why did I give up all those open profits? Well, if you go back and look at it, and this is something I didn't want to do, and, and maybe it's better to wait when we get stopped out to show you, just in case. But I've been wanting to, and I've done this before, show you like how much, how much open profits you give up over and over and over in these longer term winners, and how each time that happens, it 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 kind of it kind of takes, as 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 the British would say, it takes the piss out of you a little bit. But longer term, if you can deal with that pain, that's how you're going to make a lot of money longer term. Now, longer term is the key word in that sense. Now, you have to accept some FOMO pain and, and recognize selective perception. And that's when, a reason I put that in there, because it's, it's kind of, I can see now it's a little random reading it out loud. But what I'm referring to there is like lately we've been in this crazy market. And when we get to the P's, I'll, I'll show you how crazy it is. But I think if you've been trading over the last couple of weeks, you know, up one day, down the next, up half a day, down the rest of the day. You know, it's crazy. And lately, I haven't recommended anything in the service. We're back to that sitting on our hands thing. And then every now and then you're like, oh, geez, we seem to have missed one. But we're all guilty of this selective perception which comes with being a human being where you might see something get away but for everyone that gets away you probably would have had 10 losses and believe me it wasn't worth it 
self-inflicted wounds. I am not holier than thou here. <laughs> you know, I had somebody visit last week and I was really nervous about having him watch the sausage get made. And luckily, and I, I, and I think it's one of those, what's that Heisenberg thing with the, with the, the physics or whatever, that it, it, through the observation, you're changing what's being observed. So maybe, just maybe, I was on my best behavior. My wife warned me. She said, uh, you know, she said, don't be a hero in there and don't show off. And she also said, don't be a dick. <laughs> She's very frank with me. Now, these self-inflicted wounds, you need to feel enough pain to say, well, I'll do that once, okay, and, and not let it creep you. And, and well, I do that once came from, it's kind of a long story, but after my first child was born, uh, biological child, I was very nervous and stressed out, as you would imagine. And I went to get a little cash out the ATM and buy some fast food or whatever. And uh, the I left the card in the machine, and the machine ate the card. And and my wife sort of gave me a pass. And she says, "Well, you'll do that once." And then anytime she screws up, especially if she screwed up before, I remind her, "Oh, you'll do that once." But anyway try to say okay i'll do that once and learn from that and if you learn from it it's not a complete loss and one thing I, that i was thinking of lately is when i make a mistake that i've made before it's like how many times do we have to relearn a lesson and i'll tell you something that you could do there to help and, and i'm not holier than now you know listen to what i say and not always what i do but there are some things you could do there one big problem that I see quite often, and we're all guilty as human beings, okay? And again, I don't want to come off holier than now, is that you have to recognize, but it was working so well, syndrome. And you and the markets change, or some combination thereof. Now, but it was working so well, syndrome, every now and then you're you're going to get into a state of flow. and and Boy, if I could figure out how to get into that state of flow, stay into that state of flow, and recognize when I'm not in that state of flow, I think I would own the world. And uh, Mahaley Chisholm, Mahaley, it's, or I can't say his last name without seeing it. It's about that long. He wrote a book on flow. It's really good. But sometimes you get into a state of flow with the with the market. And um, what's the expensive violin, Stradivarius? Is that the right word? I have a client that tells me sometimes he feels like he's playing a Stradivarius in the market, you know? But you print money and you can do no wrong. And I know many clients past and present, and I know a couple of you are gonna say, hey Dave, are you talking about me? I'm like, well, I'm talking about you and many others that I've crossed paths with who print money for some extended periods and then have a bit of a blow up. These traders have mad skill, in some cases, mad skills. In some cases, I'm jealous. And I can be admittedly a little goaded by what they're doing and end up with some self-inflicted wounds. I am not a scalper. I know scalpers that are pretty incredible at what they do, and I'm not one. Unfortunately, occasionally they forget that things can change drastically. For instance, the volatility of the market can drop way off or can increase, but for somebody who's doing a a very short-term type of trading, if that volatility dries up and the volume dries up in a combination with that, it could get a little dangerous and tough to trade. So these traders have mad skills. And again, sometimes I'm, I'm jealous, but eventually suffer from, but it was working so well, syndrome. Now recently, I don't think I have it on my desk. Some of this presentation is expired, and expired, inspired, by a book I just finally got around to reading. It's a book full of interviews with people, Linda Rasky and quite a few others. I think Van Tharp might be in there or somebody references. I think Steen Barger references Van Tharp. But anyway, it's few. It's pretty good. Most of the articles in there are pretty good. Um, and one of the things they talked about was, was a little bit of neurology. And I'm like, well, that makes a lot of sense. And sometimes you have to hear things for the fourth or fifth time for it to sink in. It was a bit of an aha moment, but after I got to thinking about it, I was like, well, I sort of already knew a lot of that stuff, but definitely want to give them credit where credit is due. And I'll have the title, I'll put the title in, in post for you. But there is a neurology and a psychology at work here. 
Now, when things are going swimmingly, dopamine is, is being released. And what's happening, and it might not be known to you, but or unbeknownst to you, is that you're creating an urge to keep doing what feels good. Now, when things change, either with you or the markets, you might find yourself chasing that high. And as I often say, unfortunately, bad emotions have twice the impact of good emotions, and that's actually been measured. And I know some of you guys, I think it's Craig was saying, he thinks it's 10 times and many more. And boy, it sure feels like 10 times sometimes. So that's what creates the so-called gambler's ruin. You end up chasing that high and the losses hit you really hard and then the gains don't really have that same effect. I, I don't get, I, I really don't get excited when I have a big gain. I just kind of feel like, okay, I'm doing the right thing, keep doing the right thing, keep doing the right thing. But boy, when I have losses, I, I lose my shit. I really do. 